Really quickly, before this video gets started, here's a clip of me getting an achievement on the world because I had a lot of people who seemed to think that I did this in creative and I can understand why. So here's just a clip. You cannot get achievements in a world that has ever been on creative. So just to dispel anybody thinking that, here you go. Let's get on to the video. Hello, Lloyd. It is Tenet Apple 2 here, and we are finally here for my long-anticipated world tour. Now, this isn't actually the first tour that I've done of this world. If you're new here, or, you know, you just haven't seen it already, I did actually do a world tour about a year ago at this point, where I showed off the world at that time, but a lot has changed in a year. Um, so if you want to go back and see what it looked like a year ago, I'm still going to do all of the tour. I'm going to show off the entire world in this video. But, you know, in case you're curious and you want to see that, I will leave that linked below. I'll also throw something on screen. But, yeah, let's 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 focus on this world now. So, um, a little backstory before we actually show everything off. This world is a very, very old world. It was created on March 27th of 2014. And so, it's about six years old at this point. And it has been through a ton of stuff. It was started on Xbox 360. It was then transferred to the Xbox One. Then to Bedrock Edition on the Xbox One. And now... If I show off here, it is now on Windows 10 edition. And you will notice a couple of things here and there, like my bow right here that has both Mending and Infinity. That's not because this world was in creative. That's why I threw in that thing at the beginning, showing that I got the achievement. There are just some odd odd things throughout the world you will notice that are just kind of remnants of the fact that this was an Xbox world. And so one of them, to start off with, is the fact that our spawn is kind of the way it is, if that makes sense. I don't know if it still works, and that's why I give that little background. Because at least in the old version of Minecraft on like the Xbox 360 edition, you used to be able to place lava all around the perimeter of the spawn. And so you could not place lava within spawn. And so spawn was basically this, this I think it's 20-something. I, I don't actually know. It's maybe like two chunks by two chunks. You can't place any lava within the area where people can spawn. And so, originally I was able to figure out how big the spawn actually is by doing that. And so, we built in this little this little square that we have right here with a whole bunch of slime blocks so that people can jump around while they're stuck in here. Because when people join my world, I've had too many people grief, and so I don't give them privileges. So, you know, you have to earn those. But I figure, you know, let some people have fun if they're going to be stuck in this box. And then I also have four additions. They're all the same rules, just on, you know, the four walls. I have all the rules for my world. I won't bore you with them. I'll, I'll come up here. If you want to read them, here they are. They basically just say, you know, don't be a jerk, don't grieve, stuff like that. So, yeah, this is what it looks like when you first spawn in in my world. And then up there, we can actually fly up there real quick. Um, this big old square that's just hovering above spawn was originally meant to be sort of a little backstory as well in my world i have you know all the stuff that i built i call my own country we call it tadpolia um but some of my friends also have their own countries on my world and so we built this originally thinking that you know if my friends have their own country and people join the world and want to go to their country rather than spending a bunch of time in my world or like in my country they could go to you know one of my friends and my friends could have their little base here get them situated and then they could head off to that country rather than being stuck here obviously it hasn't really worked but that was kind of the idea of what this was and now it really just serves as a big old platform to look out at all this stuff near spawn especially these towers i absolutely love the towers these towers are actually kind of just a recreation of the ones that i have in my city that i will be showing off later on but these towers are just they're so much fun. I love them. Um, we actually built, I think, from here all the way over around here. We built all of these towers during live streams. So I have a playlist on my channel. If you want to check it out, we did all of those right here live streaming on YouTube. So it was a lot of fun. I love these towers. They're pretty much completely empty because I am horrible at decorating. That's something you will notice, you know, the, the further along we get in this video. But I absolutely love it. And so... Yeah, this is basically how my spawn looks. So when you first join in, you'll, you'll probably just be greeted by looking up at that pickle square. But that's what it looks like up there. So when you come in, assuming that I want to let you in, 
either myself or one of my friends will come over here and we'll open the gate for you and you can walk in this way and you will notice we have a lot of these doorways just because i've had people come on to grief and you know other people no shame to anyone who has joined my world but they're horrible at closing doors and so i have doors all over the place we have the gate there a door here and then another gateway up there just to make sure nobody gets out if they're not meant to and so yeah when you first come in here this is sort of like a little hub to get started we have some basic stuff like armor and uh, we have some tools and some food if you want to grab that just basic stuff to get you started and you'll notice it has a decidedly you know end theme to it and this was because in the old versions of xbox i don't think you can do it now but at least on xbox 360 and xbox one edition you used to be able to just reset the end and by that i don't mean just like respawn the dragon you could just reset the entire end and so i would fight the dragon constantly and you could get as many eggs as you want i just have two in here that are sitting here so i've had a lot of people accuse me of putting the world in creative this was actually because this was on the 360 that's why i have so many eggs but uh, going off of the eggs, you will also notice that I put do not punch because for any fellow fellow expertise in Minecraft, you will know if you punch the egg, that thing will just teleport into who knows where. It'll go to Timbuktu. And so because this is in a pretty dense forest or pretty dense jungle, um, that egg will just go all over the place. And I was sick and tired of people doing that, right? Because everyone thought they were comedian. You join my world, you walk through here. I give you some stuff, and you just give the egg a big old whack. And so originally, I would, like, laugh it off. But uh, that is no longer a laughing matter. And so still within the walls of spawn, which I haven't really showed off, we have walls that go all the way around spawn. Still within these walls, we have what I like to call the shame shack. And this is basically just a shack where if you punch the egg, you'll come over here to be, like, processed. You know, you'll, you'll sit down, talk to whoever's doing it, and then you'll come on over here. I'll put you in a, you know, air quotes, holding cell, and then we'll pull this lever, and you will fall down into the pit of shame. And <laughs> the pit of shame is equipped with a nice little fireball launcher, and you're basically just stuck down here because a lot of people, and when I say a lot, I mean like most people when they join my world would punch the egg, and I just got sick of it, so you know. I made an adorable little pit that's like its own little prison to, to specifically put people who punch the egg. And it does have a little doorway here, but you have to know that it's behind the dirt. So, you know, nobody nobody tell anybody about that. <laughs> but um, you'll kind of be thrown in there and, uh, you know, good riddance to people who punch the egg, you know. And then it'll lead you out into this little cave here that admittedly I haven't done much with. Um, I did actually make a whole video of building that if you do want to check that out. But I, I assume most of y'all don't. So um, after that, uh, assuming that you do not punch the egg, this will just be something that you actually just walk past and know that, you know, egg punchers beware. You get thrown in there. But assuming that you do get out, we will bring you through the big old gate, which I think is just lovely. Um, you'll be walked through here. And then you will have another chance to get some food. I know I had some food in the the little area over there but if you want like potatoes or wheat or bamboo even though you can't eat it um you can come in here and you can grab some extra food in this farm here that i set up for you and then you can you can just go out into the world and so one of my favorite things by spawn has to be the gladiator arena and that is because it's one of the first buildings that i made here by spawn um it predates all of these towers, and I think it was like the second thing that I built over here after I built the original spawn houses. It's very loosely based off of the Colosseum. Um, it was meant to just have a whole bunch of seating so that people could come in and watch, and then, you know, a big old platform in the middle where people can just fight. And so it doesn't get a ton of use, I have to say. It was mainly created because I have a lot of friends who enjoy just hashing it out, and they would run amok in my world, just attacking each other with swords. And so we built this here so that, you know, if somebody wanted to come in and fight, they could. We have used it for just fights between friends and, like, usually we'll bet a couple diamonds on it. Um, we have also used it to where the prison, which I will show off in a moment, um, when we got too many prisoners at one point in our history, um, we did let them come over and, you know, hash it out and whoever won got to have their freedom. We don't do that much because prisoners, we really don't have that many anymore. But I don't know. It, it has a, a whole bunch of a whole bunch of uses it could be used for. We just rarely do. And then you will also notice the big E in the middle. That was because at one point during a live stream when I was building some of these towers, 
my my chat decided to spam E, and one of my mods said the only way he would get everyone to stop was if I put a big ol' E in the middle. And so, you know, I, th I think it's beautiful. You know, if, if people are having a little archer duel in the arena, you know, they gotta watch out for the E. So, <laughs> that's, that's basically it for the gladiator arena. Um, but like I mentioned before, we do actually have a prison over here. And this was originally in, like, the corner of the world. I know it definitely doesn't look like it because we have all these builds around it. But basically, on the other side of this gate, like, originally, this fence that I have here used to be that side and that side. That back never existed. This was the corner of the original, like, Xbox 360 size world. And it's it's just a prison uh, because i had a lot of people grief in like the early days since then griefing has become like going to creative and destroying stuff apparently and so if you get griefed you basically get kicked but originally i would throw them in prison and so to make it a bit more scary um it's hard to tell because i flattened the entire area this used to be one big old plains biome like you can see right there and so to make it a bit more scary i threw in this whole dark oak forest i know it doesn't do much i just love dark oak and so you know the first chance i had saplings i planted this entire forest here so this is completely artificial and i think it's beautiful and just sort of you know helps set the aura so you know if you are going to prison the first thing that you will come to is our little like processing station if that makes sense we have a government building on the other side of the world all the way out there that this links up to via rail and I mean, I'll show you the bottom. It's nothing too fancy. We basically just have quartz and sea lantern. And you'll go along this rail all the way from there underground. And you'll be led here. And so once you get here, we will walk you all the way over. And you'll notice, again, this is still within the walls. So no escaping, no escaping. But you'll be led over here. Usually we'll have like three to four other people helping me do this. Because, you know, when we're leading you over here, we have... Oh, this is very mean. Oh, I'm not sure why he decided to do that, but, um, you'll have, you know, you'll, you'll have the person come up to the gate, and then we have a little guard station in here, where they pull the lever, and then the gate will go down, and you will lead the prisoner on in, and then, again, since we normally have more people than this, we'll have someone else pull that lever again, so the gate goes back up, but then you will lead them into here to our second gate, where you pull that lever, whoops, I'll just leave it there, I don't care, <laughs> Um, and you'll get, get walked into like the prison yard right here. And so we have a couple of prisoners over here already, but the basic thing is if you are to, and we don't do this for like minor stuff. It's usually like if you griefed or just won't stop killing someone, we'll take you into a prison cell right here. You'll have a bed. You'll have a little toilet, which actually fun story about the toilet. Um, we actually had to put these blocks in place because I completely forgot if you just have this lead into like the open ocean, which is where it used to be. Um, they can just swim out through the toilet, and so we had we had a prisoner at one point that we found just like sitting in the ocean <laughs> Because we forgot that you can actually get out so you know we, we have a little toilet there that is Kind of clogged in hindsight not the best idea, but you know it is what it is uh, But you'll have that you'll have a little bed and then we give you a little chest to throw your things in which apparently someone already has and then if you are going into prison We'll just break the key put your name on a sign and that's that. Usually we don't throw too many people in here. Like I said, we have three current residents, which I'm going to be honest, none of them really deserve to be in there. But you know what? It is what it is. Um, we also have this execution chamber here, which knock on wood has yet to be used on a prisoner. I did have a couple of friends who just wanted to use it at one point, but it works the same way as the shame shack. Basically, we have a few more rules, but we'll lead you in here. You come on in. We'll lock the door behind you and then we'll pull that lever and you will fall a great distance. And you can see the XP from, you know, one of my friends who wanted to test it out. It basically just has hopper to, hoppers down there to collect all your stuff. And, you know, we, we get a little kickback from all the stuff that you drop. So we do usually let you, like, put your stuff in a chest if you want it. But that's, that's basically it for the prison. Like I said, it doesn't get a lot of use anymore because, you know, most people that join the world don't grief at this point. I should say most of my friends who do, I've had a number of people grief that I just let on for fun. But yeah, that's basically what this is for. And then if you come on, whoops, if you come on through here, 
Um, basically, all this stuff around here that aren't the cells are meant for, like, you know, the guards and the warden. So, over here, we have the warden's office. Now, the warden's office looks very different than it used to. Originally, it had a bit more decoration, like it had some uh, some armor stains that had diamond armor on them. But people wouldn't stop sealing them. Uh, my friend Ty was actually the warden here. And people just kept taking his armor that were his guards. So, now instead of, you know, armor stains, he has his little dog here that's meant to help you know, keep out any baddies or anyone that would want to bring him harm. So he just sits here. If somebody has a complaint, they can come talk to him. We also have little windows that, you know, probably aren't the best for privacy, but, you know, the guards can walk around and look into each of the cells just to make sure they're not doing anything with, like, contraband or anything like that. But, yeah, that is about it for the prison. I just want to make sure that I close up each of these gates before we go. But, like I said, it doesn't get a ton of use. Um, a lot of people nowadays, I, more often than you would think, I still get griefed now, but, like, the griefs have been getting more and more insane, so I, I don't usually let people on much anymore, but, yeah, that's it for the prison. Um, one of the oldest things in the world, but I still absolutely love it. So, coming back from that, I think some of the last things we have around spawn are over this way, and that is actually because this right here, and I, I know I'm pointing at, like, almost nothing, um, this right here is actually the original spawn house and you will notice I have this castle here that my friend Nathan has been helping me build that connects to it that is completely separate this is just because I like having a castle here and there's not much to show off because it's not finished but hopefully by next year's tour uh, that that will be there but this right here is actually what the original spawn used to be so I'm not sure why because this did still happen I believe on the 360 um, when I first spawned in the world, I spawned somewhere around here because our spawn was basically this area and then across the bridge over here. This used to be like a jungle, for, or not a jungle forest, this used to be like an oak wood forest. And so around here was where spawn was originally. And so similarly to the spawn we have over there, I made this little house down here where, you know, if, if people join the world, they could come in, get some armor and supplies and stuff like that and get set up to the world rather than, you know, running around naked, starving to death. But that's basically what this is. And then I will show this off. It's not actually there. So you're going to have to put on your, your thinking cap and, you know, imagine it. But we used to have a rail that would go all the way from here to my city. And so that's why we sort of have this, like, cleared out path along here with, like, just a button sitting on the wall. There used to be, like, a railway. But especially with, you know, the elytra that I'm wearing right now, there isn't much use for it anymore. But... Yeah, that's, that's basically what this was, and so you'll also notice we put in some stairs, although we, we didn't actually finish the job. There, there are a lot of projects that need to be finished. Um, and then right here we have, it's a house that's like closest to spawn, and that is because um, I had a friend who was very lazy and didn't want to come to the city, so he decided to plop his house down right here, and it has been griefed so many times, because I don't know, people just can't read the sign. Um, I put my friend's name on the sign, his name was Soundreel. And he lived here. People would just come here, ransack the place, steal whatever they wanted. And so you'll notice it basically just has his chest. Um, I think at one point he had a bed in here, but people would just keep stealing it. So nowadays, since we have been building the tower, we kind of just use it as our like base of operations. We would come here to sleep at night to get away from the phantoms. And, you know, I it, it's a quaint little house. That's why I leave it here. You'll notice a very stark dichotomy between, like, you know, the big old towers and then just this very average looking house that is because you know it's just kind of a relic of the past if you will and then right here is a carrot farm that well it doesn't seem very special um at the time it was the only other farm that existed aside from the one that i have in like my town over there so i really like it i think it's nice um it's not the biggest carrot farm but you know i just think it's it's super quaint and then I think one of the more useful things that we actually have here, because a lot of these are kind of just for show or for people to live, is the subway station. And while it definitely does not look like it from the outside, originally when I built this, I looked up like a subway sandwich shop and it came up with a design kind of like this. So it was meant to be like a play on words like, you know, subway sandwich, but for the subway. I know, hilarious, but um, we have Welcome to Subway. See, I even didn't put the Subway. I put Welcome to Subway because I wanted it to be like the sandwich shop. I don't think a single person has ever gotten that reference, but you know what? It makes me chuckle. Um, but you come in here. It's exactly what it looks like. It's really just a railway that'll take you 
Originally, this would take you over to my castle. Now, this one will take you to my castle, and then this one will take you over to the suburbs that I will show off in a minute. But it was basically just here because, you know, especially in the early days of my world, when, again, Elytra did not exist, um, taking the rail was the fastest way to get to my city rather than, you know, trying to starve to death getting to there. So, you know, it, it still kind of serves a purpose. Again, relic of the past, relic of the olden days. Um, around here we also have, you know, even more towers because if you if you haven't figured it out, I guess some people call them skyscrapers. I've always called them towers. So what, whatever you want to call them, we just have a whole bunch of empty towers that like tower over absolutely everything. Um, this I feel like needs a bit of explanation. I think it's pretty obvious to tell what it is. It's a big old block of cheese, and that is because uh, my friend Farid, who is you know a moderator on my channel, um, I was doing a live stream probably about like six or nine months ago, where we were just having fun and a bunch of people, much like the E, started spamming the word cheese. And so my friend said, you know, I'm going to ban everyone who says cheese. And I'm like, well, you can ban them, but you can't ban me. So <laughs> I made a big old block of cheese. I also, I'll show it off later, in the suburbs, I wrote out the word cheese in sea lanterns. So it's just a big old block of cheese. It's kind of just an inside joke. And then on the inside, we have a little mouse that we call Jerry which I think is just adorable. Again, it's just a stupid build that that makes me smile every time I see it because I remember just how stupid it is. Oh, I love it. And then I think the final thing to show off here in the suburbs would have to be, or not the suburbs, in uh, spawn, would have to be, whoops, let me fly up, would have to be the baseball stadium right here. And this, while it looks probably fairly unassuming, is the longest single project I have ever built on my world and I say that because this took about three months to build and it probably doesn't look like it but it used to be a very tall hill probably about I don't know that tall ish and so I had to flatten this whole thing um, it, again it's harder to tell because you know the outside is flattened but if you go back and watch the old world tour you'll know what I mean that this was a very tall hill and we flattened out the entire thing um, this is because I'm I'm from St. Louis. I'm a huge baseball fan. Love the Cardinals. And so I was watching some of their games, you know, one summer. And I decided, hey, why not make a giant baseball stadium? And so it does kind of work. I don't know if we've ever actually played a game here. So the way it'll work is you have bows and arrows. And then obviously you have your uniforms over here. These are supposed to be like, you know, red and a blue team. And these are supposed to be flame arrows. But... You know what, we all get lazy at some point, but the way it's played is the pitcher will come up here with their bow, they're fired in to the umpire, and then the batter, and I'm gonna bat lefty because I'm a lefty, um, they'll pick up that arrow and then we give them, you know, one second to pull back and fire. And then you just have to run the base path and try and make it home to score a run. And then the fielders will pick up that arrow and basically they can shoot it into another infielder or they can just, you know, shoot it straight at you. If they hit you, you're out. If you make it home without being hit, you're safe. That's that's basically the way it's played. It's a very jank way of playing. I understand that, but I love baseball, and I didn't know a better way to play it, so I wanted to make this, and I just love it. And it was also made a while ago. I, I don't think Terracotta was out at the time, or if it was, it was very, like, difficult to get. I think even at that time, it was still called Hardened Clay. But I, I don't think we had enough of it to get. So you will notice it's alternating between um, this green wool and grass. And that is just so it gives sort of like this this mode look to it. Like, you know, in real baseball stadiums, how they have really nice, you know, grass mode into it. So I think it looks wonderful. We also have, you know, the foul lines are also made of wool. And then we have some coarse dirt for like the, the foul, you know, the foul ball area. I think it's wonderful. I think it's beautiful. Let me actually get some more firework rockets so that we can walk around. But this is, this is, like I said, the biggest project, or at least the longest project in my world. Because it took about three months, mostly because of this wool. It may not seem like it, but like, you know, when I was shearing my, what, like 20 sheep at the time, it took months to just get all of that wool. So this is probably one of my proudest achievements. I would love to someday during like a stream or something, play a game of baseball, but for now... It's just an absolute looker, you know what I'm saying? And then over here, I'm not even going to go inside. This is basically just one big old empty pyramid that I got bored and decided to build one day. So there's really nothing to it. There's especially like those towers. There's a lot of things in my world that I'll just get bored and build. So 
this is just another example of that. And then I threw a beacon inside just so, you know, when you're running around, you can get some speed and also just annoy everyone who is watching me by getting all those swell particle effects. But yeah, that's most of the stuff we have right around spawn. And then this, while it's technically still connected, I consider it very different. This is probably my least favorite thing in the entire world. And this is my attempt at like an industrial district, if that makes sense. So this was basically meant to be like a factory area. But first and foremost, if you look at this factory, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This thing is ugly as all get out. Um, I forgot that campfires were a thing. And so I basically just threw in a whole bunch of spider webs at the top. Let me fly up here. Oh, that's tragic. Um, <laughs> yeah, I basically put in a whole bunch of cobwebs so that, I don't know, it looked like smoke. It, it looks terrible. I'm not going to lie. It looks terrible. It was meant to be like a factory. And then that was going to be another subway, but also like... You know, it's right next to the original subway, so why would I need that? Um, we have this hotel here, and then what I'm standing on right here are just the shops. Again, you really have to use your imagination with some of this stuff. It, it really doesn't look that great, so if you guys have any better, like, industrial-style builds, um, let me know either in the comments or you can tweet me. My Twitter is at Tentatapple2. I would like to do something better with this. It's just... It's bad. <laughs> I mean, it's it's really bad. You'll notice in my last world tour, I think I sugarcoated it a bit more. And uh, it, it did not turn out as well as I would like. But yeah, that is basically the industrial district. And now let's get on to some things I'm definitely more proud of. And that would have to be over here. This is what I originally called just the suburbs. But I now call my subscriber suburbs. And that is because after my original world tour last year, it did very well on YouTube. And so I had a lot of people saying, hey, they wanted to join and build some houses. So I cleared out this big old area here and I just let people join and build houses. Now, I don't really do that so much anymore because like I said, I got griefed quite a few times. I'm just kind of sick of it. But the people who built, like especially Drone Napper's house right here, they made some incredible houses. Like it's just such a quaint little house right here where he has his beds. He has some armor and then a nice little basement down here. I just love it. You know, they're, they're houses that I definitely wouldn't have thought to build. I, I may build something kind of similar to this, but I just think it's adorable. He also has like a little horse stable right here. I think it's wonderful and basically everybody built here. And, you know, I get that they may not be, you know, the best. Like that one right there doesn't have a roof, but I just love these houses. I think it's a great idea. If you have your own world, um, I would say just let some friends on and build houses because... I mean, just this amalgamation of all these different styles of builds is just an incredible thing to me. So, this is basically the suburbs. These houses over there, I built myself, but who cares about them, honestly? Um, we basically just have a whole bunch of houses here. Originally, what this was meant to be was my friends who were in the world, before they got, like, their own country, you know, they wanted their own house. And so, like, that house over there, which I can fly to... Um, I had my friend join and say that he wanted to build his own house, and so I'm like, well, you're not building the house where I have my house. So we made this little suburbs area where I put in the road and basically gave people plots of land to build their own house. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, we're, we're, we're gonna fight these guys off. Um, we, we basically just gave them this area where I would clear out the area and then they'd pay me like five diamonds for the plot, and they could build their own little house here. And I think the funniest thing is Gnarly, my friend who owns this house, didn't like that I gave him, like, a little plot. Or, you know, I'm not sure exactly why he did this. But he decided in his basement, which again, let me let me show this off. This is the size of his plot that he had to work with. And then in his basement down here, he decided just to go off into the next plot's basement area. So his basement is, like, two entire plots. I have asked him to fix this more times than I care to admit. So this is kind of just here to stay, but... I don't know, I just love this. It's it's a nice little area where, you know, they could they could all come here. And originally I had a lot of friends who had some houses here. Again, like I said, they have since made their own countries, so nobody really lives here anymore, but I just thought it was wonderful. And then especially when the, my subscribers were first joining the world, I built this little area right here that's kind of fenced in. It's meant to be sort of like a community center, if that makes sense. So, uh, oh, here's that cheese that I had mentioned before. I built this just to annoy my friend Fareed, but um, this was meant to be, you know, if you join the world and you just wanted to work in the suburbs, this now leads to the subway that I have on the other side that I showed off earlier. And then over here, we have like a little hotel 
where if you know if you don't have room in your house you can have your friends stay here and then we also have a little farm over here that you know if, if you need some food the whole community can come and get farm or come and get food from the farm here i think it's a very quaint little town and then we also have a town hall here that again is completely empty but yeah this is basically just meant to be one big old little little town for people who you know my town that i'll show off in a moment which i call tadpolia it definitely has like its own little click to it. You had to be here at the beginning of the world. So this is sort of like for newer people who join the world. And uh, again, one little flyover. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And then, you know, let's get to the oldest part of the city. So the oldest part of the city is all the way over here. And so right here is actually my first ever house. And I think it's I still think it kind of stands the test of time, but it's mostly just like a historic relic at this point. We have, you know, a sign that says the day that I founded it, as well as when we transferred it to the Xbox One. I didn't quite get the date. It was last August when I transferred it to uh, Windows 10 edition, but yeah, I try to keep this as like its own little historical thing. The house did not look like this the entire time. This is sort of how it looked when I originally built it. After I built it, I decided to expand the house, and so where you see that horse stable right there, it used to actually go all the way out there, and then I hated the house, so I threw my horses in there. Like, where the horses are now is where they were in my house that just expanded out that way. It was horrible, so I got rid of it, um, but this is what the original house looked like. I brought in my little cat as well, and then I also love this basement down here. This is where my original little, like... I can't even call it a chest room. It's kind of just like a little nook that I had my chests were. Um, this is kind of where the chests just sit. Uh, you will also notice that it combines with my neighbor's basement. And that is because originally, like right now it has all the stuff for my villager breeding. But originally this was empty and he just threw in lag machines just to make me mad. And so, you know, I built this little doorway here so that he could not continuously lag out my world just to annoy me. But we also have the nether portal, which I will be going into later because we have stuff farther away. But for now, it just looks beautiful. And then it also connects up to the mine that's right here. It's nothing too crazy. It's just a pretty basic mine. I'll show it off real quick. Um, I added some wood to it just because I thought it would look, you know, cleaner. And then we have this little mine cart that... I don't know why. I haven't used that thing in quite literally years. But this is the mine. It's basically just a normal strip mine where you would just go off in a whole bunch of directions. And it leads up to another mine that I have in my castle that I'll show later on. But, yeah, we, we have a lot of stuff that's kind of interconnected. Here is a room that one of my friends decided to make because for some reason he didn't want to make his own house. So he wanted to live in my mine and be a little gremlin. Not really sure why he did that, but... <laughs> You know, that's there. And then this room over here, it is the most basic room that you will ever see. Um, I don't remember actually if I made it originally for mushrooms or for mobs, but I literally just used this room to spawn mobs and to also get a whole bunch of mushrooms. So, I don't know. It's just a very dark room that I have in my mind that, you know, I think is beautiful. And then that right there is my basement, but I will actually show you my, or an extension of my basement. So let me show you in here, and let me let me close this up for the full effect. People would always come down and just rob me, because this chest had all my stuff for when I used my enchanting table, and then obviously all my stuff was right here. So people would come in to rob me all the time. So I thought, you know, I was going to be slick. So I threw in a little sticky piston with my crafting table right here, and boom, it gives you a little ladder where you can get down here. Uh, I leave it open almost all the time, so I'm not sure why I thought I was slick to do that, but... You know what? Yeah, so here is like my little bunker that I built. It was because, like I have said too many times in this video already, I got griefed a whole bunch of times um, in like the early days of my world, and I still get griefed to this day. But I was paranoid, so I wanted like a little bunker where I, if the top of my world got completely obliterated, I could still live out my days here. So we have like a semi-auto pumpkin and melon farm right here. We also have a carrot farm right here. This used to be an automatic sugarcane farm, but it has since stopped working, so I just threw in a button right here, and you just push that, it knocks all the sugarcane into the hoppers, puts it into this chest, works quite nicely. Um, I used to have, like, an egg thing, I, I just had, like, a chicken sitting there, and then one day, I mean, you can see right here, something happened to him, I don't know what happened, but we used to have a chicken right there, 
And then in here, we also have a nice little cactus farm that this is probably the only farm I have ever built, like automatic farm, that has not broken. So please, Mojang, don't ever destroy this. But yeah, and then we also have like a water source block right here. It's a little four by four in case you ever need water. So this is really meant to where if I need to get anything at any point, I can come down here and just, you know, live out my days. And while originally it was made to be kind of like a bunker, I then decided to expand it to turn it into like a full-fledged basement. And so over here, I won't actually go down there right now. This will be towards the end of the video. Um, this track right here leads you all the way to my XP farm as well as my end portal. So it's, it's a very handy way to get around. But through here was actually my original like full chest room. So much like most people when they first play Minecraft, I never actually had a normal chest room in my world. I basically just had chests sitting around my house. And so I wanted to dedicate an entire room to nothing but chests. And so you'll notice it's pretty organized. Well, that's that's not me. <laughs> but uh, it, it's pretty organized with like the signs of everything that's in these chests. Um, I have since moved to a new place. I live in a castle now. And so, you will notice this is kind of disheveled, there's not a lot of stuff in here, and that's because I moved most of it, but I always love coming in here because I think it's wonderful, and you can't really tell now because it's off, but I thought I was the biggest brain, because um, in the very early days of Minecraft, I don't know when it actually came out, but when Daylight sen Sensors came out, I thought it was brilliant. If this was going to be a bunker, I have a daylight sensor that's just sitting in the middle of the water, like off the coast of this little island that I live on, where, you know, when it's nighttime, this thing will be off, and when it's daytime, this will be on, because I thought, you know, if I'm spending so much time down here, I'll know. Um, could have also just used a clock, which, you know, I forgot existed, but I thought I was big brain for doing that, so I'm very proud of this. And then over here, we obviously have the beds, and then a little enchanting table, and then this table right here was because, like I've said so many times, I was super paranoid in the olden days of my world that I was going to get griefed, so I thought, you know, if ever I was I was getting griefed, I would have a little war room right here, where people could come in, we could meet and discuss how we would fight off the, the griefing, I don't know, I, I don't know, <laughs> I, I was pretty stupid back then, so I had a lot of these things in place as like an idea of what I wanted to do, but... Yeah, that's basically what this was, and then if you come through here, it has much like the farms that I had over that way. Um, I decided to put in some animal farms right here, so we have your cows, your chickens, your sheep, and your pigs, and these are the same sheep that I sheared the you-know-what out of in order to make that entire baseball stadium. So, I love these guys, I I've bred them quite a bit over the years, because somehow wolves still manage to spawn down here, and so they have almost been wiped out on numerous occasions. But yeah, there's them, and then the dogs, I, I wish I could show off the dogs better, I'm not sure how it happened, but somebody came in and re-dyed all of these white, and then, because I said in my last world tour that they were all white, since then when I transferred it to um, Windows 10 edition, I don't know how they kept their name, but these are not my dogs, these are just like wolves that sit in there. I don't know how it works, but, um, you know, I, I do at some point need to get the bones that I have right here and make these all my dogs again. These were originally just like, you know, the dog pack that I had because everybody's got to have dogs. So we have all of them here with their name. And originally they used to have like, you know, the, the wool here. I would have their collar dyed that color. I'll have to do that again someday. But that's that's sort of like the, the basic purpose of all of this. And so, yeah, this was basically, in case, you know, my food got low, I could come in here and have my own little animal farm. It was such a hassle. I, I know it probably doesn't look like it, but getting all of these animals downstairs and into my basement was such a hassle. So I was super proud of this at the time. And then finally in my basement, if you come around here, um, I'll quickly show this off. This used to be an armory, and it may look like someone griefed it and blew it up, but I never finished the armory, and then I just destroyed the whole thing, so you know, rip to the armory. <laughs> um, this right here, uh, I'll show it as I leave. This links up. It's actually one big old circle that you can, you know, run laps in. Again, in case I was getting griefed, I wanted multiple ways to get out. So you can run up through that way or you can get out through here. There's a whole bunch of exits for this basement, so you can never truly be stuck down here. But over here, I have a little potion making room. You'll notice it is very far. How did that creeper get down? Oh boy, I don't like that. <laughs> Um, you'll notice it's very far from all the other stuff, and that is because I suck at making potions, and so this was like an afterthought, 
and I think I've brewed a couple of potions in my day. I can promise you every single one of these I had to look up the crafting recipe to make because I have no idea how to make potions. So this is more of, you know, in case I needed it. It was really just an afterthought. And then over here, this was originally just like a normal cave, which a lot of this was actually just a normal cave. Um, so I decided one day I was bored. And so I made my own little American flag right here. I was very proud of it because I like freehanded this flag for a lot of my builds, especially like flags and stuff like that. I would just look them up to get an idea. So this one I'm very proud of because I just kind of came up with it on my own. But, you know, America, <laughs> you, you got to love it. And then through here. We have up there, I haven't really used it, and I know in the last world tour I said I was going to, but we do have a spider spawner right here that at some point I'm going to have to use, but I I've, I don't know how you can make like an XP farm out of them, because I do have an XP farm, but it's with a skeleton spawner, but, you know, it is what it is. And then down here we have a giant obsidian room, and we also have these beds here, because this is where I used to fight the wither now it no longer really serves that purpose for the wither fighting room as you can tell i threw a bunch of chests in here we used to duplicate quite a bit in here like this became my duplication room which you know i i will admit right now that if you don't like duplicating i'm sorry i have done that quite a bit in this world um especially when i first got to xbox one when i didn't have a whole bunch of saplings for like acacia or for um like dark oak i would duplicate those but I'll be honest, it has since gone past that a bit, so this has kind of just become a duplication room. I used to fight the Wither all the time in here, and so you'll notice, you know, the ceiling was a little roughed up. It used to originally be obsidian, but they just blew the heck out of that, so I decided to get rid of that, and, you know, it just reminds me of, of the good old days when I had to fight the Wither constantly to get all the beacons that I have. And then, like I said, we would sleep in there just so that if we did get killed, which we got killed a lot fighting the Wither, we could get right into there really quick. So that is about it for my original house. And the reason I show it off so much is because this was like literally the combination of years of working on this. So it's, it's still one of my favorite things. Um, I don't live here anymore, although it still just has so much, so much use to it. It's so many different builds put into one. It's like, you know, a farm potion making, fighting the wither, all that stuff. I just love it. And so that's why I wanted to show it off. And then we also have this pond here. And this is my first beacon. I don't remember quite when I got it, but those fish were just going insane there for a second. Um, I don't exactly remember when I first got it, but when I first got my beacon, I wanted to throw it right in the middle of town. And so we call this town, I think we call it like Tadpolia. Um, we've had a couple different names. Sometimes we call it Old Tadpolia because this was the first, first town. Um... But yeah, this house right here, uh, you can see it says Simon the Cat, but you will notice it has a very large cat living in it. And that is because this house is absolutely cursed. Because, you know, I love how it looks. I think it's a very quaint little house. However, every single person that I have given it to has either, like, backstabbed me by stealing stuff from me, or they tried to blow up the house, or they just decided not to live here. I don't know what it is. Every time I give this house to someone, they ruin it or, or get themselves kicked off the server. And my cat is no exception. I gave this to my cat, who I named Simon. I threw him in here, and he has since disappeared. I have not seen that cat in well over, like, two years at this point. So I now have my horse in here. We call him Dem Hops because he is slow as molasses, but boy, howdy, can he jump. I think he can jump, like, six blocks or something like that. He's a jumper, so, you know, I can't use him as a normal horse, but we threw him in here. Eventually, he's probably going to run away, <laughs> given the track history of this place, but... I love it. This house right here was owned by one of my friends. He's the one who would love to make lag machines, and so he has not been on in years, but I still love it. It's still a very cute little house. He also had an obsession with the nether, so that's why it has this very, you know, evil look to it. And then right here, we also have my lighthouse, which I used to let people live in, but similarly to the, less similarly to this one, because this one I actually had, like, griefers live in. The lighthouse I would give to people, and they just wouldn't live in it, so... Now it just serves as like a lighthouse, and originally when we were very far from, I say very far, but like, you know, Xbox 360 level of far away from spawn, um, this would sort of let people know where they were going to get over here. And then finally, before, you know, we start moving towards the city, along here is something that I call Unfinished Island, 
Now, by the looks of it, that's kind of a weird name. We call it Unfinished Island because this is an island where I've never really finished a project. Aside from this villager farm that I have right here, like this villager breeder that I have, we never really finished anything. At one point, I tried putting towers here. That failed. My original, like, two villager breeders didn't really work out that well. Um, I used it for a time to make an AFK fishing farm, but that also didn't really work. And so now it's just swarmed with cats. And then on the inside of that little thing right there, which I can't really show off. I can jump up to show you. But this is where we got a whole bunch of villagers. I actually made an entire video out of it. We just have villagers in there. And so, you know, maybe I should rename it to like Villager Island or something. But we've always called it Unfinished Island. I also left the road unfinished. Just, you know, to, to keep up with the lore. But, yeah, this is it's a very quaint little thing that you would think being so close to my original town should be finished, but I never actually did. So, yeah, that is most of, like, old Tadpolia. And then the last two things I want to show off before we move on to the city are actually, like, you'll notice all of these trees that I have here. I kind of wanted to make this original town, like, a utopia. So, it has one of each of the tree types, aside from dark oak in it. Just because, you know, in my travels of getting all of the saplings, I wanted to bring him back and make this, you know, its own little place. And then, like I said, that I am obsessed with farming. This is my original farm in my world, which is dummy big. Um, it, for some of you who have, like, even bigger farms, this may not seem like a lot. But if you were to farm this entire farm, you would not have to get food for, like, two real-life weeks. It gives you stupid amounts of food. And so, you know, we have never needed any other farms. That's why the farms that I had before seemed kind of special because we never really had all that many in the world until I decided to just start building them out of vanity. So this is my farm. I absolutely love it. And then if you come across here, you will notice the city. Now, this is probably my most recognizable part of my world and definitely what I think most people are proud of. So before when I was saying that I like towers, um, let me let me give you a quick flyover of just how many towers we have. Uh, I think last count there were about 50. Uh, this basically just takes up one entire like continent. I call it a continent, but it's more of just like a little island. This takes up one entire island completely filled with towers. And I don't have time to go through all of these towers. Otherwise, this video would be like three hours long. But I just love it. I, I don't know why. Um, originally, and mind you, this was before he ever thought of running. I saw a picture of, like, Trump Tower. Or no, I think I went to Chicago and saw the Trump Tower there. And I just thought it was amazing. And since my name is, you know, Tended Tadpole, I wanted one that had a big old T on it, like Trump Tower. Again, this was all created before he ever thought about running. So there were no politics involved in that. I just thought it would be neat. So... Um, I can't remember, I, I always say it was one or the other, but I can't remember if it was actually the Swirl Tower that I have here, or Tadpole Tower that I have here. Either way, I just thought it would be really neat to have stupid tall towers in the world, and the original Tadpole Tower took about two weeks to build, and since then I'm able to build the towers in about a day. So, I just love those towers. If you do at some point want to see me go through, like, each of the towers, I can, because they do each have, like, their own little story a lot of them have some meaning there are some that i really don't care about i just built them for fun but i love the city so getting back to the original part of it um when you first come into the city the first thing assuming you, you aren't just awestruck and by the towers you will notice this here uh pyramid and that was actually the first thing that i built over here because you know i noticed it was a desert and I think in school we were learning about, you know, ancient Giza. And so I wanted to make, or I think it's Giza. I don't know. I was learning about the pyramids. And I just thought it would be really neat to have my own pyramid here. And so much like the ones that they originally built, I threw in some gold at the top. And this was like literally all of the gold I had at the time. And so I made this little pyramid. I've had a number of friends try to live in it. But every time they, I think Gnarly was the most successful. He lived in it for a while. For now, it's just kind of meant to be like a little tomb type area. I mean, it's, it's meant to just be a pyramid. Um, there are some chests where people just throw in random stuff from time to time, but I don't know. I just thought it was really neat. It was never really meant to serve an actual purpose. I just loved the idea of making a pyramid. So I threw one in <laughs> and that was sort of the start of all of this. And then I decided this was after I spent a very long time building the houses over there. So this was after I had like my full on basement years into the world, I decided I wanted to have like a full on castle. 
And so I built this in other people's worlds at times, but I just wanted my own castle. And so I decided to make my own. And so it's literally just four walls um, with little towers on each of the four corners. And I think it's absolutely magnificent. I have lived here for, I think, the bulk of the world at this point. I think it was the world was maybe like a year or two old when I made it. And I have technically built a new house that I'm supposed to live in, but I still don't actually live in that house. But, um, yeah, so when you come in here, the first thing you will notice, the map here is all disoriented. I don't know who. Somebody came in here and just messed with the map, so I don't feel like fixing that right now. Um, but when you come in, you'll notice I have the throne here where, you know, me being the king of the world, I'll just sit here and, you know, glare at you if you walk into the castle. And then along the walls, there aren't a ton of them, I know, but um, for everyone who has ever donated during, like, my live streams or has donated to, like, my PayPal or something, I've thrown their name on the wall all the way around. Again, there aren't a ton of them, but I really do appreciate each and every person who has donated to me during streams or, like, done a super chat or something. So I thought that would be a nice way to, to say thanks to them. And then on the inside, we also have these little guys right here that have either my best or just like some of my rarest armor. So like, you know, you'll notice the chain mail. It's not necessarily great. It's just fairly rare. And then my best set of armor right there. They're basically just meant to just, you know, sit there and look cute. And then, oh, one thing I do want to show off as well. I built this here, this big old 1000. I put that there when I got to my first thousand subscribers. And I love just keeping it there as, as a reminder to how far we've come. So I just love all of this. And then probably the best part of the tower or of the castle that we have would have to be the basement. And this basement is magnificent. I absolutely love it. It has, I mean, I showed off my chest room before. This is basically that chest room multiplied out by like what, six or something? Like each one of these is as big as my original chest room. And so this is just a giant chest room with anything you could ever want. We have, you know, our nether stuff right here. We have just random stuff here. We have our food and our tools here. We have stone and sand. Um, we just have anything you could possibly want. I threw it all in here. I also have some, you know, little armor stands here for decoration. And then over here, I've never really done much with it. Right there, I have a duplicator because, like I said, I have duplicated on the world. Um, I try not to use it that much, but, you know, I, I use it more than I wish I did. Um, in here, I have a little bedroom that is honestly pretty trash. I've tried to update this thing a couple of times, but I never seem to get it right. And so that's really why I originally made my uh, my new house that I will show off in a moment. But yeah, that's, that's kind of what this was. And then down here is not much, but we have the enchanting table over there. And then this right here is actually that rail that I showed off the subway earlier. This uh, leads up to that subway. And so this side actually goes over to the suburbs that I showed off before, and then this side over here still takes you to that original subway. So, I think it's nice. I'll, I'll show off the bottom since I showed off the other one. I think it's it's nice and quaint. It's very beautiful. And these minecarts, I, I don't know why. They just go on in perpetuity. I never really stop them. They just kind of bounce around. So, if ever you need to use this, you'll always find a minecart just kind of just kind of going from place to place. So, yeah, that's basically it for my castle. Um, I know that I went through this a lot quicker than my original house, and that's just because, for the most part, this is really just storage. So, yeah, that's basically my castle. Um, over here we do have, I know I showed, I have a horse stable on the other side. I do have my one fastest horse, Zeus, right here, that, you know, if ever I need to get off in a jiffy, I can use him. Whoa, there's a lot of mobs. Um, one thing I don't think I've showed off enough is in the towers, I do also have... I mean, I showed you in, in the other area that I flattened the entire area. I also put in these roads that intersect absolutely everything. So, if ever you want to go from tower to tower, you will notice the, the great roads that go all around them. And, I mean, I absolutely love everything about this city. I think it's definitely my favorite thing that I've done in Minecraft so far. So, it's just wonderful. So, that's, you know, that's, that's mostly it for most of the city. Um, but... Just outside of the city, we have this little island here along this bridge, which I love this bridge. Um, we call this Tadpolia Federal Island. And that is because it has like the two federal buildings, or, like the two government type buildings for the world. And that is 
the nonagon and the bank and so the bank is exactly what you think it is it's literally just a bank up there is where we keep all of the diamonds um we have an economy in this world that's literally just based on diamonds and so you know you'll come in here because we've had a lot of duplication in the world i try not to accept too many diamonds but you know if you go on a great mining trip you would come in you would throw your diamonds over to the teller the teller would take them up we also have like our own i have my own like in-person log where i keep all of the transactions so if the bank is ever robbed which it has been quite a few times we know how many diamonds each person actually has so yeah i mean we do actually have a fairly functioning economy on this world and so that's why we have the bank there and then over here is the nonagon and the reason we call it the nonagon you probably won't be able to tell if i fly up but it's technically like a nine-sided building so you know how like the pentagon is five sides well you know nonagon is nine sides and so um, it's difficult to tell, but I will show you this side all the way over here is like technically rounded off. And so you'll notice it's kind of rounded along the edges. That's because it's technically round, so it's not a face, so I keep it nine sides. You see what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, so the Nonagon, the biggest thing that we really use the Nonagon for would have to be the little like trial room that we have here, um, or the courtroom that we have here. So if ever a crime is committed, in the world usually would have to be like theft or killing someone we will hold the trial and so over here we have the prosecution we have the defense because i'm you know the king of my world um i usually preside over the cases unless i'm involved in them and so we'll sit here we'll have witnesses come up for both sides we'll hear it all out and then we'll usually dole out a punishment of normally it's it's paying someone like a fine of however many diamonds or if they really want to go to the gladiator arena or go to prison or something like that we can arrange that as well but like i said it's mostly fines and so if you do come in here and on the off chance that you are sentenced to prison um, what we will do is over here we have little jail cells which make up like the rounded side that i was showing off before so you come in here you'll kind of just sit and wait and you know we'll, we'll lock the door and keep you in here just like we have at the prison and then right here oh i don't know how that wolf got in there um right here we have uh like i showed at the prison this is where that meets up to so if you are convicted of a crime you'll be brought over here and sent down this little this little pathway and it'll take you to the prison that i showed off earlier on in the video and so those are the two biggest things that we have for the nonagon upstairs i do also have my own little room because you know i am the, the judge so i have this little room here um where i sit and we also funny story about this little desk right here i have a friend who was like i don't want to say he was dirt poor at the time but he wanted to build something i think he wanted this might have been for his house he didn't have enough diamonds to buy a plot of land to build something so he decided he needed a job and so I gave him a job of being like my little my little clerk for for the judge. So he would sit here and anytime anyone would come up to yet to uh, to talk to me or something like that, he would just yell at them. Like I'm telling you, we, we would sit here. It was like a day of just like fake role playing of me being a judge where, you know, some of my friends came over and they were just like, hey, I have an issue. And he would just yell at them to get them to leave. So I thought it was hilarious. And then on the backside, I absolutely love you have this nice view of all the towers over here and we also have um well it's not technically a tower i absolutely love this thing right here um it's a little sculpture that i built because you know we have enough towers i had plotted off usually when i'm building the towers i'll plot off a bunch of areas and then put the towers in and so i had this little plot here and i didn't want to build a tower and so i decided to make this little statue here that was originally meant to be like a snake going in and through like the lava right here but because it's made of stone and because the head is kind of rounded, all of my friends seem to think that this is like the Pokemon Onyx. So, you know, it's it's pretty much an Onyx statue at this point. And you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> and so I think it's great. And then we also have this unfinished tower here that's meant to be like a construction site type thing. I've been meaning to put a crane on the inside of that, but I never do. But you know what? There, there's a lot of works in progress throughout the world. And then finally over here, um, before we move on, I do want to show off, this is our mall. And I say mall very loosely. Which side goes down? I don't actually, this side goes down. Um, I say it very loosely because it almost never gets used. But um, originally we made this as sort of a way where people could put their own shops in. More often than not, if somebody needs something, they'll just go to another person and that's where they buy it. So over here we have like a little tunnel area that was meant to be sort of like an escape room that we've never actually 
finished up because that leads to an abandoned mine shaft. So eventually we'll do something with the mall down here. Um, over here is my friend. He calls it the cartography shop. This is my friend Ty's. He just has a little map room right here that we, we spent a lot of time investing in to get like the 3x3 three three maps. And then it never ended up working. So we kind of just gave up on that. Um, over here is actually my personal shop. We call it the block shop. Where if you ever need to buy any blocks for any reason, you can just come down here. And we have, I don't have a ton of them, because like I said, most people just come to my castle to get stuff. But you can buy shulker boxes here, you can get obsidian, I think there's stone, there's grass. There's just a whole bunch of stuff. Any any block you could want, I'll sell down here. And then over here we have our own little cafe, which I think is quaint. This is definitely when I was first trying to figure out, trying to decorate. So I threw in these little seats, and then we also have like a downstairs area where... It's supposed to be storage, but you know what? You you get the idea. You know, you get it was more for the idea rather than the actual build. And then right here is the suicide booth, which may seem a little crass. It it may seem a little off color, but I built this because I think I was watching like Futurama at the time, and so in some one of the first episodes they have like a, a suicide booth. And the basic thing is, you know, you walk in, you walk up there, and then that'll pull out from under you and much like the execution chamber at the prison, you'll just fall to your death down there. And then if you come through here, you can go down, and there's a chest with some hoppers, and you can pick up all their stuff. And so, again, it, if it comes across crass or defends you, I'm sorry about that. It was meant to just be sort of a joke. And so, yeah, that's basically it for the mall. Like I said, it doesn't get a ton of use, because any commerce that we really do have, people just kind of figure it out on their own. And so, it's, it's nothing too crazy. So, that is mostly it for the city. I will give one last flyover because I think it's absolutely beautiful and it's just wonderful so um, the next couple things I want to show off are kind of just like bits and pieces that are all over the place um, oh actually before we move on I do want to quickly show you this this here is you will notice an absolutely giant building and that is because this is our hospital and so let me fall down to the very bottom um, this is, I mean, it's exactly what I said it was. It's a hospital where people can come in. I've tried furnishing it a bit better. We have a gift shop right here that's completely empty. We have a couple of waiting rooms. And then I just threw in a ton of offices all over the place. So I don't want to show it all off because it's a lot. I can show this off at a different, if you guys want me to, to make a video of showing off the uh, hospital or actually finishing it. Because not all the floors are even finished. Um... This is just sort of like a big project. I wanted to throw in some beacons and other stuff because originally this was supposed to be the mall, but as you will notice, it's just too big. It's too big to be the mall. And so we decided to turn it into a little hospital, and I think it's turned out lovely. So, yeah, if you were wondering what that giant building was, I, I finally addressed that. But over here, because I've mentioned it a few times, um, after I built the castle, you may have noticed... It's, it's less for me, it's more so for my other friends. Um, my castle is very laggy at this point, and that is because it's very old, it has a lot of stuff near it. And so, instead of that, we decided to come over here, or I decided to come over here and build myself a new mansion. And so, it's not too far out, you can still see one of the, one of the towers from the city. But this here is my mansion, and I actually spent a couple episodes building this on my channel, so if you want to check those out, they are on my channel. It's basically just a big old house that has a bunch of stuff that I could need. I still haven't fully moved in because I haven't finished building it, but we basically have the bedroom. Um, I tried getting bees for a while, that's why I locked up the back way. But back there we just have a couple of big old farms, and then I gotta make sure every so often a wolf will get in there and just terrorize them. No, they're good, okay. Um, we have some bees in there. We have a little pantry right here. We have my dogs. Because, you know, you gotta love the dog. It's like, basically every time I walk by here, I'm not doing it now. Um, I'll just breed the dogs. And so they just keep multiplying and I love it. Uh, we have our own little kitchen right here. And then there are a couple of floors that I, I think I'll stop showing it off before I take too long. We've basically just furnished the whole... Oh, there's the bee. <laughs> uh, we've basically just furnished the whole place. Uh, not completely. Some of the top floors are still not done, but... I'm just really proud of this because, I mean, I think you saw it in my castle. I was horrible at decorating, and so I really wanted to make this look good, and I hope you appreciate it as well. So this is technically where we're supposed to be living now, and that is about it for my personal builds. So, like I said before, um, 
we, we kind of, from here, split off into countries. So after I built the city, um, my friends decided that they wanted to do, like, their own different things with the world. And so that's when the splits sort of happened. And so the first area that we split is actually along this bridge right here. And it was meant to be a friend of mine named Gnarly. It was meant to be his country. But Gnarly has decided he wanted a new country more times than I care to admit. So along this bridge right here, it's technically not my country, but we built like a snowy suburbs. So the suburbs that you saw before, I would let literally anyone build in. So if anyone just joined the world and wanted to build, someone could build in the suburbs. These snowy suburbs over here that I've been meaning to give a name, um, these are only for people who are like pretty good at building. So I've had probably about five or so people come in and they just build these really nice houses that I absolutely love. So it's meant to be sort of like a gated community where I put a fence all the way around the thing. It's very snowy. I love the snow. And we just have a bunch of really nice houses. And I don't think any of them are furnished because we have a horrible... A horrible you know track record of not furnishing anything in the world but i just think the houses are really lovely and so yeah this is basically meant to be like the the fancier the upper living part of of my world if that makes sense also before i fly off too quick that right there is a heart that my friend john i told him to come over and build a house and so he built this little heart that i just thought was, was so wholesome but yeah that's that's the one that's like not actually a full-on country um, let us head over to, it was a tower that I sort of brushed over very quickly, but, um, the tower that technically connects a lot of these is something that I call Grant Central Station. It is a tower that, my name is Grant, for those of y'all who don't know, so it was a real play on words instead of, like, Grand Central Station. We called it Grant Central Station. And so, it's this tower right here. Um, it's meant to sort of be... Especially before we had Elytra, I threw this in here to be like a hub where, you know, we would have all of all of the railways to different countries. As you can see, we only have the one. So, you know, that, that might be another work in progress. But let us quickly go um, to the first country that ever existed aside from my own, and that is Thailand. And finally, here we are in Thailand. Now, this isn't... It's meant to be sort of like a play on words. You know, it's not spelled Thailand like T-H-A-I. It's spelled T-Y because my friend's name is Thai. And so he thought it would be, it was a very good play on words to call it Thailand. You know, T-Y land. Th that's the name of the place. Um, it's a pretty bare bones place because um, a lot of these countries, when people made their countries, didn't actually play on them too much just because it, it never really caught wind as much as you know my city did so over here there isn't a ton that we have this right here is a house that i built um i will quickly go up the hill over here this hill is actually or this house over here is actually the one made by ty himself um which, oh boy why are there so many creepers um this is basically his house it's nothing too crazy he just has some chests a bed and then over here I really love this. It has a nice little window that looks out into like a, a real snowy biome. I just love the snow. And then over there, you will notice that big old tower. Like I have said numerous times, I love towers. And so um, on each person's country, um, everyone is allowed to build their own like embassy. And so, you know, because I build towers all the time, I thought, what better embassy than to put a giant tower? And so I'll show that off in a minute, but there aren't too many builds. Um, this also leads into the cave where he has, everybody has a nether portal that links up their country to my original one. And we'll go in that in a little bit because Ties is the only one, like I said, that you can get to via rail. So I prefer to do that than go through the nether. But the biggest and probably most obvious part about Thailand would have to be the Jedi Temple. And that is because my friend Ty is a huge Star Wars fan. He, he was a real big prequels fan. And so when he decided to come over here and build his country, um, he really wanted, you know, because I have the towers on my world or on my country that, you know, define what that place is, but he wanted his own thing. And so we decided to make the Jedi temple for him. Originally, he wanted to make like the Millennium Falcon or like the Death Star or something. And I'm like, dude, we cannot do that. And so this is basically like a replica of the one, the Jedi temple that's on Coruscant. And so when you walk inside, we have recently furnished it just a little bit. And I wouldn't even say furnish it. We basically gave it like a flooring and made it to where it wasn't completely dark. Um, 
there's not much to it. It's it's basically just meant to be a little. A, I don't. I'm not sure what he's gonna do with it actually. Um, but we built it because, you know, I love Star Wars and so does he. And so we thought it would look nice. And so that's probably the most recognizable part of Thailand. And then over here, like I was mentioning before, um, my tower because we had we had some fun times in Thailand because uh, first and foremost, I love towers and I also love farms. Uh, one thing you will quickly notice is. This is the only farm in Thailand, and so in a country made for my friend, uh, he kept having to mooch food off of me, and so this sort of started, not fights with me per se, but um, some of my other friends that joined the world were in arguments with him, and they wanted to come to his, uh, his country very badly, and so he decided to promptly banish them from coming to the country. And so, uh, what we did, because this is my embassy, it's technically my property. And so, because it's, you know, Tadpolia properly, my other friends were allowed to come in here. And so, I basically had to make this, like, an actually livable place. So, that's why we have, you know, the enchanting table. And then, over here, they decided to make this wonderful little mine that clearly juts out of my own property line. And so, you know, they tried to make their own little secret base down here in Thailand because they wanted to overthrow him in his own country. I know this sounds ridiculous, but, like, they literally put this base down here so that they could overthrow my friend Thai in his own country. So, like I said, not a ton happened here in Thailand. It's just, you know, most of the stuff that did happen on my property. And so, eventually, Thai came in and, uh... I think the way they did it was like, you know, oh, you don't have an extradition treaty with Thai, so like, I couldn't, I couldn't let Thai in to just, you know, come in and kill them because they were illegally on his property, and so, you know, at one point we just kicked them out and Thai decided to kill everyone that was on his country, or that was in his country aside from me, so part of the reason that you will not see a lot of stuff made in Thailand is because Thai was a bit of a tyrant as a ruler, and so... Yeah, that's about it for Thailand. Um, because, you know, we, we already had to take a pretty long rail ride to get over here. Um, for the next couple countries, I'm going to go in through the nether. Because we do have a nice little nether hub. But I will cut to when we finally make it to, like, the center of the nether hub. Okay, so this is the nether of my world. And one thing that I should also mention is this nether portal right here is not the one that we went through in Thailand. This actually links up to the nether portal that is in the basement of my original house that I showed off. So just just to stop some confusion there, um, that's what this is. My nether is not... It, it leaves much to be desired. Part of the reason I haven't done a lot with my nether is because... The new nether update will be coming to Minecraft soon, and I don't want to explore too much. I want to leave it sort of a small, you know, rendered nether so that I can get, like, the netherite and all the cool stuff that they're adding. So, my nether isn't incredible, but basically I made these little hallways that lead in each of the cardinal directions. You know, that go, I, I don't know the directions right now, but let's assume, you know, like, west, north, and east, something like that. Um, these are basically the directions that they go in, and so... Uh, we came from that way, technically. Over there is where you come in from Thailand. Um, the next country that was built... Actually, I'll go this way. Um, the next country that was built and then rebuilt and then rebuilt again <laughs> was my friend Gnarly. Um, his name's, his full name, his full gamer tag, I should say, is Gnarly Rex. And so he wanted to create his own country that he was going to call Rexington. And so he, he tried out a couple of different lands... For some reason, every time he would get a country, he would decide he needed a new one. And so, eventually, we finally went through the nether, created this portal, and it brought him here. Which was a little acacia biome. And so, up these stairs is what we like to call Rexington. Now, this is the newest of the nations. Um, it was created... Ooh, it was, it was only a couple of months ago. And I should say this specific one, because like I said, Gnarly has had a couple of different countries. But, um... One day, I think it was like on a weekend when he got on, on a whim, we decided to create his own little town up here, which I think is absolutely adorable. Um, it basically just has, you know, a little farm with some stuff over here. And then over here, I think there are only like four or five buildings. So this right here is my house that I built, which I like to think I got a little bit better at furnishing things. But this right here is the little house that I had in here. It has a nice little, nice little fireplace. It has a kitchen. And then upstairs, it has this wonderful, wonderful little bedroom that I have. But, oof, why can't I get down this ladder? Um, 
But it also has this big old care farm that I built. Oddly enough, uh, you, I said that I didn't do a ton in Thailand. Pretty much everything you see here in Rexington, I built because uh, Gnarly is a rather stubborn individual, which Gnarly, if you're watching, you know you're a pretty stubborn individual. Um, he, he basically picked the land and then questioned whether he actually wanted it. And so we basically built him a little country here. Um, my friend John built this house. We have a little fishing dock. I think it's, I don't know if it's a fishing or a boat dock. We have a little dock right here. Um, and then a fishing hut here. Uh, I built a little house right there for Salbert. Most of it is pretty empty. That's why I'm not showing any of it off really. We have a couple of farms, you know, in case you need some food. And I have tried to keep the cows to themselves, but somehow every time I do, a sheep manages to get in anyway. So I kind of gave up on that one. Um, this over here is just, I thought it'd be really neat to try and like hide the beacon that we were using for him. So I think it's neat that it has like a little, a little dirt pile. Cause I wanted this to kind of look like a little African village, if that makes sense. I didn't mean for it to be like, you know, super dilapidated or anything like that. I just wanted it to look you know, not so urbanized, you know, how my entire city just looks like that, so, we have this little town here, and then, Gnarly himself has a little house here that we kind of tried to furnish, but then didn't entirely, so, yeah, I, I think this is definitely, definitely an ode to Gnarly that, you know, he was so stubborn, he didn't want to make his own village, so, this is Rexington. Alright, so back at the hub for my nether, to get to Rexington, you would have to go that way. The next country over that we are going to go to is actually just straight this way, but it's pretty far, so I'm going to have to cut this again. Um, and that is Salbia, and that is because, you know, we try to name the countries after the person who owns it. So, you know, we have Thailand for Thai, we have Rexington for Re uh, Gnarly Rex, and then my friend Salbert made her country, and we call it Salbia. Now, unlike the other two countries that honestly aren't that far away, and you could really just fly to them in the overworld, Salbia is pretty far away, so that's why you will notice that we have this nice little ice track that we take boats across, although I already put my boat away, but yeah, so Salbia is pretty far away. So to get to Salbia, you, you actually have to go through the nether, um, but when you get to Salbia, I mean, I just think this place, of the three countries, I definitely think this is the most well thought out, and she actually worked on quite a bit. So when you first get to Salvia, she has her nice little castle here that I love because, you know, I built the big old spawn for my entire world. So I like that when you actually come to Salvia, she did something to make it seem welcoming. You know, for, for Ty, you kind of just come in in a craggly cave. For Gnarly, it's basically a mine. But for Salbert, she has this nice little, nice little castle right here. And it has some beds in here just in case you want to stay. But aside from the castle... Similarly to Gnarly in effect, uh, she didn't do a ton here in Salvia yet. So she has this little, uh, this little ravine where she put some, uh, she put some stained glass over it, which she, she kind of stole from me, but, you know, we're gonna accept it for what it is. Um, but she has this, that's basically it. So over here, similarly to with Gnarly, I decided to build a whole bunch of stuff. And so I have my own little house here. She doesn't actually even have a mine here. That's my mine that I built here. And then I built a little farm over there. And then actually Drone Napper, who built a house that you saw in the suburbs before, put a house here as well. So I think it's really quaint. I, I like Salvia so far. Definitely this is a project that will be worked on more and more in the future because Salbert does play quite a bit. And so I anticipate she will be helping quite a bit on her own country. So this is one sort of to, to look out more for the future with. And then one other thing that I love about Salvia is, and this is, I think the second video that I have mentioned this, um, <laughs> Salbert does not pay attention necessarily to what I'm doing when I come to her country. So I decided to just come out here with a whole bunch of stone and put in another pyramid. Cause like I said, I love pyramids. So, you know, this is the third pyramid of the world. I threw this in here and she has yet to call me on it. So, Salbert, I, I don't know if you're going to be watching this far, because, you know, even when I make 10 minute videos, you only watch halfway through them, but, you know, everybody else, you can kind of ignore that one, just, you know, it's a pyramid, but, but I love that I have made two videos now where I'm showing off her pyramid, and she has yet to see it, so, yeah, shout out to Salbert. <laughs> and then the final country to actually show off in the world is one that I made an entire series about on my channel, so I'm going to only very briefly show it off. So back at my nether hub, the final country that is in my world is actually one that I myself created. 
and I definitely think is the most hashed out. Now, if you're not new to my channel, you definitely know about this, but for those of you who are new to my channel, um, I actually made an entire series out of building this. I called it Running Away, and the main purpose for this one was because, you know, my other friends wanted their own country where they could have their own stuff in my world, but I figured because, I mean, you've seen the city that I've had, you've seen all the stuff that I've built, I decided that I wanted to have, you know, my own little, my own little separate area away from all the other things, and I didn't want to create my own new world for it, and so I decided to build my own little area that, I called this series Running Away because, you know, I was running away from, from all the other stuff that I have, but we now call this area Tadshire. And so, I don't want to show it off too much because I already did an entire tour of it. If you'd like to see that, I'll throw something on screen and I'll also put that in the description. But this is Tadshire. It's basically just like an old English or Germanic village, I, I'm not sure what you would call it, where, you know, we basically just lived here for like... I think it took about six months, maybe nine months to create it. I'm not sure exactly how long it took, but we basically just tried to restart. I came here originally without anything else, and we restarted and tried to play it like a new survival world. And I absolutely love the place. Um, it's kind of where I got this, this nice little wall and the gate theme that I eventually put around my entire spawn, but I think it's absolutely lovely. If you would like to see either the world tour or for it, or we built this entire thing, you know, as a video series. So if you want to see either of those, I will throw both of those in the description of this, but oh, I just love this place. So with a lot of my other builds, as well as the other countries out of the way, I want to finish up on a few key builds that we have in the world. And that is because, I mean, a lot of the things that I have are honestly some fluff. And uh, some of these are, at least to me, some of the most sentimental builds that I have in the world. And most of them are actually on this little cove right here. And so I think the, the one that stands out to me the most is this cake. And this cake was actually, I made it as part of a video. Um, this was made on the sixth birthday of my world, just because, I mean, like I said at the beginning of this video, this this world is amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, I definitely talked about it in my last world tour a lot more, but this world has been through with me through a lot of, of difficult times in my life. It was with me when my uncle died, when my grandma died, um, when I found out some of my family members were sick. You know, it was like I, I could come here and it would sort of be like a little, a little, I don't want to say like a mini therapy session, but it was very therapeutic to me to play on this world. So to pay homage, I, I made this cake here that I think is absolutely adorable. My friend Gnarly helped me with it. And on the inside, we basically turned it into a little museum where we have some, like, important blocks or things that represent, you know, some important times. Like, you know, when I first built the towers or when I transferred it to the expo and things like that. So, I absolutely love this cake and it definitely means a lot to me. It's one of the more meaningful things in my world. Um, over here, while it doesn't necessarily mean a ton to me... I really, really like this build. Um, actually, one of one of my subscribers built it. Um, this is our little panda sanctuary. And the reason I love it so much is because I, I feel like this was really the, the first time that I let subscribers come on and help me much. And this was because it was the first time I had really gotten pandas in my world. And they came on and we, we got some, some baby pandas. And my friend Ty promptly came over and killed them. And so... Out of the kindness of his heart, I believe it was comedy, shout out to you, um, came over here and built this entire panda sanctuary that I absolutely love, and, I mean, it's, it's just beautiful. It definitely is overflowing with bamboo, but it's something that, you know, while it may not necessarily be incredible, I definitely appreciate it, and it, I think it was very surreal after, you know, my YouTube channel first started to pop off that I actually had people who would want to come on and help me with builds like this. So I just love this because it's very sentimental to me. And I love that it's in the city as well because, you know, you, you get to have the pandas here. And then I think the second to last thing that I will show off is probably one of the biggest builds. I think it's the biggest singular build that we have. Not time-wise, but like physically. And that is WCPM Mansion. And we call it WCPM Mansion because, you know, back in like the Black Ops 2 days, um, we had our little clan that we called WCPM. And we decided everyone that was a member could live in one big ol' big ol' mansion. And so, because I have a thing for building giant mansions that I will never actually use, we built just this stupid large mansion here that is, I don't even I think it's like six floors tall? Five or six floors tall. Um, where each member of, like, our little clan would be given a floor where they could build. 
obviously, as with all great builds on my world, it is completely empty. Um, but I absolutely love just the, the aesthetic of it, like the outside look of it. Um, over here, we do have, like, it, it was... It was a very odd one. It was like its own little island, and it had a lake within the island. So I thought it was beautiful. It's basically like our little swimming pool here. And then we also have an entire other mansion made for just the guest house. So this is definitely one of my favorite builds, even though much like most of the towers, it's completely empty. I really like it. And so, yeah, I don't know. It definitely doesn't serve much of a purpose. It was really meant to sort of bring all of us as friends together. Like, you know, if... I would definitely recommend this on your own world. Um, make it like a town hall or something you can actually use. But building something with a bunch of friends where you're all sort of working towards something you all kind of own is definitely one of my favorite things. So that is why, to me, this, this building definitely holds a special place in my heart. And so with all of that out of the way, I think we're about done with my world. And so I figure what better place to end than the end. So over here... Um, it's actually, ooh, I don't remember if this was actually the first ever mansion that I built, but it was definitely one of the first mansions that I ever built. It's this. I don't think it looks great, I'm gonna be honest. But when we first found the end, um, this whole spot was one big ol' swamp. I know it definitely looks a lot more tamed now, but, I mean, you can see the trees over there. This was just a big ol' swamp that had almost nothing in it. And so what we did was we decided, you know, we came in here, we found the, uh, the, uh, the end portal all the way down here. But interestingly, um, this is just a room right here, has nothing in it. But interestingly, when we were going down there to get to the stronghold, we also found a little spawner right over here. And you will notice if it spawns, is it going to spawn? I don't know, it might take a second. This is actually a skeleton spawner. And that doesn't sound all that interesting, because it's like, who cares, just a skeleton spawner. It used to be a zombie spawner. Um, at some point when we were transferring it, I think from Xbox One Edition to Bedrock Edition, it got transferred into a skeleton spawner, which I just find very fascinating, because, you know, it wasn't originally. Um, I also have this light where you can turn it kind of on and off. Things will still spawn somewhat, but you can definitely hinder it quite a bit if you turn that on. So, interesting thing, if you want to be able to turn your spawner on and off, just add some lanterns to it. Or some redstone lanterns to it. And then we used to have the little output right here where they could either, you know, they'd go up all the way and then they'd either fall to their death and we could collect their stuff there. Or they'd fall and be one shot right there. Very useful. I absolutely love it. And then last but certainly not least, if you come through here, and I really ought to make a better pathway for this, but you literally just walk in here and then you take a left right here and it will take you right to our end portal. And so, whoop de doo you come in here. I've definitely tried to, you know, modernize it a bit. And so I have a tower, as I have to, as well as, you know, my, my stereotypical road that I threw in here. Um, however, uh, if I come on over here, i got to be very careful not to look at these guys. You will notice I, uh, <laughs> I fought the Ender Dragon at one point after creating it. And so, you know, kind of got a little messed up. <laughs> but... Yeah, I haven't done much with the end. Actually, when I, years ago, when, uh, when you used to be able to, this was actually before you could reset the end, um, I came in here, and I completely filled the end in water. I spent two weeks doing that, and then I built an ender ender right about where that, um, obelisk is, and since then, they, they made it to where you could reset the end, and I lost all of that progress. So, I definitely think the end is something that I want to do more with, you know, whether I make an ender ender or whether I just make, you know, a city here or do something with it. This is definitely something that I want to work on in the future. That's why I started making, you know, a little tower right there. But, you know, this, this is just, I think it's a great place to end off. So I really want to thank everybody who has watched thus far. Um, I know in my last world tour, nobody made it into like the hour long that it was, and this will probably be like an hour and a half, something like that. So I really do want to thank everyone who has watched. Um, I've been asked a whole bunch of times um, by people, you know, if it would be okay if you, if you took anything from my world and used it for inspiration. I absolutely love that people can, can see my world, like see towers or something like this and get inspiration from it. So please feel free if you like what you see. And you would like to, to do something with this. I, I would love it if you rebuilt that stuff in your own world. Um, I would appreciate it if you didn't try to, like, you know, steal it and pass it off as your own or something like that. But 
honestly, everybody gets inspiration from somewhere. So if you want to build anything that you've seen anywhere in my world, I would be happy to let you do that. Um, I would love it if you tweeted a picture of it to me as well, because I love seeing people do stuff like that. But thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy. And I also love how, because how old this world is, every time I go through the nether or the end, something like this happens. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, like I said before, if you didn't see part one and you'd like to see my, my original world, or not my original, but a year ago, you can check that one out. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, I would love it if you left a like. And if you're new here, I would absolutely love it if you subscribed. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I will catch you guys next time. True Skinder. <laughs> Thank you.